In the 5th century before Christ, Hanno the Navigator set out from the ancient metropolis of Carthage with 60 ships of 50 oars, and enough provisions to accommodate what he counted as 30,000 men and women sailing with him. The purpose of the voyage was simple, colonization. The Armada ventured beyond the Strait of Gibraltar and founded cities along the northwestern coast of Africa, dropping off men and women at each promising new settlement. Making their way south, they stumbled upon a great river inhabited by a nomadic people called the Lixitas, who were pasturing their flocks. Hanno stopped for a little while here and even developed friendships with the natives, some of whom joined him in his journey, serving as translators. The crew sailed 12 days south and planted stakes for another colony. Upon the high seas once more, Hanno came across a large river, which led to a massive lake boasting three islands at its center. A day sail beyond the archipelago, he reached the end of the lake, above which rose great mountains he described as peopled by savage men wearing skins of wild beasts. The indigenous community pelted the colonists with stones, preventing them from landing any ships so they abandoned the potential post. Following the ocean shore another 12 days south, Hanno attempted making contact with native people, but they'd run away from him. What made matters worse, the Lixite who accompanied his voyage couldn't understand anybody's speech. I'm beginning to sense that those Lixitas tribe members may not have exactly volunteered to be whisked away by a complete stranger. I digress. The party reached wooded mountains emitting a wonderful fragrance. Sailing around these mountains for two days, Hanno discovered an immense opening of the sea, from either side of which there was level ground inland. By nightfall, however, campfires could be seen leaping from every side at intervals sometimes more, sometimes less, perhaps in a coordinated manner. Hanno's ships encountered an issue here. They began taking in water. As his crew remedied the problem, the fleet limped along the shore for five days until a great bay appeared. The interpreters called it the Horn of the West. The bay harbored a large island, and within the island there existed a lake of the sea, in which there was another small island. Landing there during the day, the colonists marveled at beautiful forests, but the scenery changed by nightfall when pipes and cymbals could be heard in the distance. The thunder of drums crept closer, and then a great uproar. Fear possessed the Carthaginians. Heeding the advice of soothsayers, they immediately abandoned the island. Hanno writes, And then quickly sailing forth, we passed by a burning country full of fragrance from which great torrents of fire flowed down to the sea. But the land could not be come at for the heat, and we sailed along with all speed, being stricken by fear. After a journey of four days, we saw the land at night covered with flames, and in the midst there was one lofty fire greater than the rest, which seemed to touch the stars. By day this was seen to be a very high mountain, called Chariot of the Gods. Sailing by the fiery torrents for three days, the spooked expeditionary contingent came to a bay called Horn of the South. In the recess of this bay there was an island, like the former one actually, having a lake in which there was another island. This smaller island, however, was full of what Hanno labeled savage men. There were women with them too, in even greater numbers. They had very hairy bodies, and the interpreters called them gorilla. Hanno explains what happened next. When we pursued them, we were unable to take any of the men, for they all escaped by climbing the steep places and defending themselves with stones. But we took three of the women, who bit and scratched their leaders and would not follow us. So Hanno killed them, and then flayed them. For those unfamiliar with the practice of flaying, it is often associated with an action to strip or pull off the skin or hide from a victim's entire body. Hanno brought the skins back to Carthage, where according to Pliny the Elder, they remained on display in the Temple of Juno until the Roman destruction of the entire city in 146 BC. Shortly after the flaying, Hanno's armada lacked adequate provisions to continue colonizing, so they left the whole affair behind them and just went home. 
Alrighty everybody, that's going to do it for today's video on Hanno the Navigator. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.